In the previous section, we have talked about the features of traditional architecture by mainly taking the example of the Forbidden City. But imperial buildings are not the only important part that is worth mentioning in detail. Civilian residential housing also shares the features we have talked about in the previous section. Besides, they vary in style and building materials because, because of different climates and landforms, representing the aesthetic level and building techniques of people. Since China is a country of diverse natural environments and cultural traditions, its civilian residential housing features diverse styles. First of all, let's talk about two kinds of residential housing in the north of the China. The first kind of building is the quadrigo in Beijing. Beijing quadrigos are formed by four inward-facing houses, with the entrance gate at the southeastern corner. Facing the entrance gate, a screen wall is usually built to prevent outsiders from peeping in. Apart from security, it provides protection against dust and storms. Such a residence offers space, comfort, and privacy. The principal room is where family rituals take place and distinguished guests are welcomed. The other one is cave dwellings in Shanxi. Cave dwellings are common on Lois Plateau or northwest China and in the middle and upper ridges of the Yellow River. Cave houses have been in use for centuries. The natural condition of dry weather, little rain, cold winter, and limited timber causes the development and continuity of cave dwellings. They align well with natural terrain, and they are warm in winter and cool in summer. Then let's talk about two kinds of residential buildings in the south of China. The first one is Huizhou residential houses. They are mainly distributed in Anhui province. They were constructed by Anhui merchants. These merchants did business all over the country. After having a successful career, they returned home and built these houses to make their family proud. Huizhou residential houses embrace local physical features. They incorporate feng shui concepts and aesthetic trends with black tiles, white walls, and decorations placed elegantly on upturned eaves. With distinctive designs, they are regarded as exceptional representative of Asian Chinese residences. Hakka earth buildings are rural dwellings unique to the Hakka in the mountains. They live in southeastern Fujian. They are mysterious to people at home and abroad. They have been home to generations of local Hakka people for more than 1,000 years. The history of these earth buildings dates back to the Tang Dynasty. Hakka people migrated from central China and settled in the coastal province of Fujian. Since Hakka people traditionally lived in the mountains, they built these houses to protect themselves from bandits and wild animals. The overall building complexes are round or square, and some in the style of large mansions or in the shape of the eight trigrams. There are usually three to four floors, but the tallest complexes have up to six floors. Including the houses in the yard, such a building usually holds more than 50 families. 
Some earth buildings have the front door, portico, courtyard, and the middle hall as an ancestral hall, which is flanked by chambers and has two or three semicircular surrounding buildings at its back. A pound in front of each house collects water drained from the courtyard. People raise fish and wash clothes and vegetables in the pond. The water from the pond is used for watering the vegetable garden and battling fires in an emergency. The four buildings we have mentioned are the residential buildings for the Han nationality. Next, let's get to know something about residential buildings of ethnic minority groups. The Dai Bamboo House, as traditional dwellings of the Dai people, is usually square in shape and has two stories. It is called Bamboo House because it is primarily built of bamboo. The posts, doors, and walls are all made of bamboo. Living quarters are on the upper story, which is supported by some wooden poles and more than two meters above the ground. Livestock and poultry are kept in the open walled lower story. Sometimes it is also used for storage. The building has an oblique roof, shaped as an upside down V, covered with grass or tiles. People build this kind of roof to help to drain rain because of the huge rainfall in this area. The upper story of the house is divided into two parts, an inner bedroom and an outer living room. The upper story has a corridor and a balcony. Planted around the house are all kinds of subtropical fruit trees, such as papaya trees, banana trees. Mongolian yards are portable and round tents covered with felt. Felt is a convenient building material for Mongolians and it can provide the family from both the heat in summer and the cold in winter. Each part of a yurt is just convenient to disassemble and carry, which meets the requirement of the Mongolians' nomadic lifestyle. Generally, a small yurt has a diameter of about 4 to 6 meters with no internal pillars, while a big one usually needs two or four poles for support. The stone chamber is the most popular dwellings of the Tibetans. Built mostly of stone and earth, they look like block houses. The stone chamber is generally of three stories or more. The first story is often used for livestock and poultry. The second contains bedrooms, living rooms, and a kitchen. The third is used for keeping the statue of Buddha and butter burning lamps. Okay, in today's video, we have totally talked about seven kinds of residential buildings of the Han nationality and other ethnic groups. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.